Hello everyone, Ryan here. I am doing a tutorial on a flying code. This is requested to me by several people as of late. Um, flying codes are best used on Dragon Ball Z characters and other uh, characters from animes and series where they can fly. Now, I will show you how the code works with Kung Fu Man. As I call him, Flying Kung Fu Man. So this is him just flying about, minding his own business. And even a little combo right there. Yeah. Yeah, Eric combo him to death. Yep. Now, I know that looks super simple, but it's kind of not, but it also kind of is. Now, let's start off. First, you have to have your command. In my case, I decided to use um, button C and Z. Kung Fu Man does not have a C and Z button, so I figured it's the best thing to give him. In most cases, uh, the Dragon Ball Z characters of the past, they had two buttons you press, normally um, A and X, Y and B, or C and Z. Either of those three would make your character fly, so that's what I'm kind of using here. So, command is going to be C and Z for fly. Now, for the negative one state, it's going to be um, using state 4000 for the change state. Uh, command is going to be flying, which is what the command is. Um, another trigger all I have is uh, variable 20 is not equal to 1. And uh, state type is not equal to 8, meaning the player is not in the air. So this move can only be done in the ground. So you can only enter your flying mode if you're in the ground, not in the air. And you can only enter flying mode if you're not already in flying mode with this code. So this prevents him from flying up twice for no reason. And you also have to control. Simple, right? So, going on to the actual, um, before we go to the coding, uh, let's do the, check the sprites. I use Kung Fu Man's uh, original sprites, his basic stuff. No, I did not use that as I planned. Instead, I used a set of Kung Fu Man animations. Um, it's good to separate your stuff. You could use um, alternative to the basic ones, but aside from your your basic characters, ground movements, crouching, and jumping movements, if you want to have an air code, you need air movements. So, for example, here, uh, this is animation 30. This is a flying forward code. That's what he looks like. Then animation 31, this is a flying backwards code. Uh, 32 is flying up. It also doubles as flying down. And also doubles for his flying stance. But you can you know, make as many as you like. You can have a, um, a fly turn and everything. And all that stuff. So you can do a lot with it, actually. You can also do a, a flying guard, I believe. Yeah, you should be able to do that too. But I didn't do that in this video. I just remembered that I forgot that. Okay, so first off, let's go with state 4000 in the CNS file. State 4000 is flying up. What is it? Type equals A for air because the character is going into the air. N for physics because you want to have total control over the character. I for move type because the character is ideal. It's not an attack and it's not something else. So you don't want player two to guard for no reason when you're flying upwards. You know, uh, Control is zero because you don't want to give them back control while they're flying. Um, animation 32 is what is going to be played. So let's find 32 again. This is what's going to be played when he goes up. Uh, sprite priorities, whatever you want it to be. Uh, and at five ticks, he's gonna uh, levitate off the ground at this velocity, negative three. And at time twenty, he's gonna change state to nineteen hundred and have uh, control equal one. Uh, nineteen hundred is the flying code state. So that's that's more or less all there is to flying up into the air. Then below that I have a flying down code, which is more or less the same thing, except the velocity is reversed. And I, instead of a negative 3, I have a positive 4. So this sends them down much faster. And I have a, a, a variable set to set his um, variable 20 back to 0. The reason I use a variable is to um, to set his move set from uh, re regular moves and no moves to uh, special uh, flying moves that work well and because it's flying it also changes the aspects of the moves as well so this sets it back to um, the zero when you when you start enter landing uh, this sends you back down and this is a basic change state to uh, custom landing which is right here 
land from flying, stand, stand, no control. The this is a jump land animation, I think, and you know velocity zero, position set zero, and change to crouch. Because if you're flying down, you'll be holding down. So when you land, you kind of want to just go straight to your crouch. Because if you have a stand, it looks really strange. Here, take a look. See? Like, no matter what, changing it to crouch just looks more better, visually. Okay, so, let's start off with the actual coding. I've broken it down to several segments to make it easy. So this is the air stand. This is the state where the player is going to go into the air and enter. This state is basically him floating in the air. Now type is going to be A because he's in the air. Physics is N because he has no. You want control over his physics and movements. Control is zero. I have set to zero because if you set this to one, um, the basic uh, back, forward, down, and up buttons will take effect, and that will really mess up the whole code altogether. Um, the animation for him standing in the air is going to be 32. That same floaty business there. Now, the first set of codes I have are miscellaneous ones. Um, I can erase this. Okay, so first you have your change state. This is a change state on top, which says command flying. So to enter the fly stand, you need to enter the flying command to so go up, right? Now, if you enter it again, you'll enter uh, 401. And 401 is flying down. So both the command works for both states because it's activated separately in different ways. The other trigger is alive and round state equals three. I left a comment here. Basically if player one is alive and pl and, and uh, has entered the win state, the uh, player is going to enter the the flying down to the land uh, states. So this way, it stops you from being stuck in the air while doing your wind pose. It's more like um, a safety measure to make sure you don't uh, get stuck in an infinite loop during a wind pose or something. Or just, you know, appearing oddly. Next, I'm using, uh, I have variable 20 set to 10, or whatever value you want to set it to. 1, maybe. Uh, at time equals 30 ticks. Now, as my note here says... I'm using variable 20 as a on-off switch for flying mode. So when variable 20 is 10, flying mode is on. When variable 20 is 0, flying mode is off. And here's a limiter. Uh, this basically is a pause set code with position y less than negative 300, which meaning he will only go high up to negative 300. He will not go higher. This limits him from going too high off the stage. Now, let's see. And the pause set is used to keep him in that position. Now, if I set this to 100, you'll see I'll I'll go up, but I'll barely be able to go fi higher than what I really am. So, up I go, and look. That's as high as I can go. I can't fly any higher than this. I've tried, and I keep hitting my head. Yeah! Now, let's see. 200. Let's see what this looks like. You you could use whatever value you want. Something is very practical and not too like cheap. See, this is good because I mean, someone can like jump up twice. Let's see if I can hit him. See, I can hit him there, and he could fall down. So that's fair, still, you know. And then after that uh, limiter to stop him from going up far, you have the turn code, which basically it's gonna turn player one after he passes player two's uh, position uh, five pixels after. Take a look how that works. See, he's on him. Oh, okay. See, he's on him. He's over him. He turns. This way, you won't, your character won't be facing forward while he's, like, over here. You don't want that, you know? So this is all, like, miscellaneous code that are really just to keep everything played safe and all, you know? To make him turn, to make him be limited on the screen, to make him go down. Uh, this is to set him up for his um, jump, uh, his flying moves. Next I have here is a set of change animations. Uh, the way this works is if you hold forward, it's going to play animation 30 if you're not playing animation 30 already. So in other words, it's going to play the animation once and only once when you hold forward. Now when you let go of forward, it's going to play animation 32. Because this is a resetter here. This resets it back to um, the air stand. But th the point is, when you press forward, it's going to play animation 30. Animation 30 is flying forward. That. 
this is hold back. When you press back, it's going to play animation 31, flying back. Up and down is same animation, so it's going to be the same thing for up and down. Now, the reason you use this other trigger here is more or less to um, stop the animation from playing infinitely, which would make it not play at all, more or less. So, it's saying if player 1 is holding forward and animation 30 is not being played, play this animation. Simple, right? And this next one here says, um, this is the one that sets them back to things. So these are for movement here, forward, back, up, and down. And this is for resetting him back to his uh, flying stance animation. Uh, change animation, velocity x is 0 and velocity y is 0. So when those velocities return to 0, he's going to play his stance animation if he's not already playing it. So this way it plays fluidly without any issues. So this is all just simply animations on his movement. Next here is the actual movement codes themselves. Now, I, I made this in a kind of short, complicated-ish way, but it works the same as doing it the long way. Now, this is the short, complicated-ish way. This is the long way. Basically, um, I'll tell you the short, the long way. Uh, to move them forward, it'll be a uh, type of vel set with the trigger for command forward, hold forward. So if you're pressing hold forward, you're going to move at... Uh, I guess four uh, pixels per second. I don't know. No less. Four pixels per tick. I'm not sure how this works, honestly. But your vel set, your velocity is going to be set to four if you hold forward. If you hold back, it's going to be set to negative four. Down here, if you hold up, it's going to be set to negative four y. And if you hold down, it's going to be set to four y. Now to shorten all of that, I can simply use a vel set code with uh, triggers at any time. Um, longer than zero. If the player presses forward, he's moving five. I, I raised the number from the four. And if the player is pressing back, it moves to zero. I mean, to a negative five, sorry. And if the player is pressing neither of these two, it's going to set his x to zero. Same thing here uh, with the y position. See, this is x position, this is y position. If the player is holding down, down you're going down at velocity five. If else, player is going up, you move up negative five velocity, and if you're not pressing anything at all, you have zero. So I can actually erase these because it was just there, so I can tell you about them. But this is the actual velocity code here, and this is a slow stop code I have. So when you see release this button, actually I don't think this works at all anymore because of this this number here. But I have this here as a safely. Uh, so once you release any of the four buttons, the movement directions. The vel mode will take effect, and at 0.5.5, uh, more or less, uh, your character is going to stop, but it'll go down to it slowly. So it's not really visible to the naked eye unless you slow down, zoom in like crazy. But it's just there for uh, cosmetic effects. It looks nice. So as you see, based on the velocities here, based on the button presses. So every button changes the animation and changes the speed. So it looks like whatever you're doing you have more control, you know? And see this, how the slow stop works is I'm pressing forward, right? So my velocity is 5. Once I release forward, that 5 is going to be divided by half, which is 2.5, then divided by half again, which is I don't know what, then that's divided by half, and it keeps going down by half every tick afterwards. And once that goes to zero, and the Y goes to zero, this takes effect, and this is going to put them back to the stands. Then down here, I have a simple um, change state with uh, custom landing, basically. Just so, if the player gets too close to the ground, negative 10, negative 10, they're going to go to 402. 402 is the uh, landing from flying. So this is a simple thing here. And then I have this here, um, as, as a safe fault. Safe fault. Uh, change state to not alive, meaning if your player is dead, they're going to enter state 5000, and 5000 will more or less let Mugen take care of the character based on their position. So if you're falling and are, say, flying, you're going to fall down and just die. Here's an example of that. Up I go, and... Oh, See, state 5000 took effect, and he fell to his death and hit the ground, just like he would normally. <coughs> Now, for actual flying attacks, I, I don't know how to make it read off of the original 200s, 400s, or 600s, but I figure the easiest way to explain it would be to replicate your 
negative one states and your um, states themselves. So what you have is regular crouching attacks here. Um, jump light punch, jump strong punch, jump light kick, jump strong kick. And then I have at the bottom replicated jump states using the trigger of variable 20 being on 10 which happens when you enter fly mode. So more or less by entering fly mode you're activating variable 20. When you activate variable 20 all of these air attacks here become active. When you're not using variable 20 these all become inactive and you can't use them at all. So it's basically the same thing as a regular jumping attack except um, uh, I have a trigger all for variable 20 being 10 on. I have a trigger all for move type not equal to H. Move type not equals to H meaning this move can be done if the player is not being hit. If the player is being hit, this move cannot be done. Um, then state number is not equal to the same thing. This is to prevent um, spamming the same move over and over. He can't do the move if he's already doing it, you know, so it stops him. And state type S because he's flying. And this is more or less a copy paste for everything here. And uh, I figured to add a little combo ability into that with this here. So if he makes contact with 1910, he can easily uh, combo into 1920. So that's that. Now back to this. Um, before we get to the replicated attacks, how oh, much time? 16 minutes, wow. Okay, before we get back to the replicated attacks, at the bottom of the negative 3 states, you're going to add a, a var set. And I could change this actually. Var set move type equals h there. So var set move type equals h is the trigger. Variable 20 will turn to 0. If the player is hit more or less, the variable 20 is going to be turned to 0, which resets the variable. So then you have to enter fly mode again to set the variable back on to uh, 10 to turn it on. So this this prevents you from doing um, the flying attacks uh, at any like random strange time, and it also limits them a bit. So let's uh, take a look at this again, see how it's done in action. So this is the flying up state 4000. See he goes up and after 20 takes he changes to um, state 1900 as you see here in the bug. 1900. Now I'm going to press fo uh, back, forward, up, down. And you see how he moves? Yep. And he turns and everything. And if I press C and Z again he'll come down. Nice and easy and land. So I can fly up and down, up and down, up and down. And if I'm moving while I'm doing this, I can do like an angled one, angled uh, uh, descent and ascent button. That's kind of cool. So, <clears throat> also, if I'm flying and I hit the ground, boom, hit the ground. So my character is safe, more or less. If someone hits me, I'm safe because I, re I recovered from it. If someone does this, I'm not too safe. Wait. And as long as that, not safe at all. But uh, yeah, that's mainly how you code a flying, um, how to code a flying mode with attacks and all that. See, the states are replicated, and all I changed for them was the physics. But let's take a look at the replicated states. So uh, this is I copied state 600 from Kung Fu Man. Um, states 600, 610, 630, 640. And change your state depths, of course, to a different value, which I'm, I'm using. Um, you change your physics to N because you don't want them to have air physics. If they have air physics, they're going to fall down after you do the attack. I, in fact, I think I'll show you. So, physics N, I mean A, sorry, for the first A attack. So, watch, I'm going to fly up, flying up, and I'm going to press the first A attack. See, it kind of went down when I did that. That's because of my physics taking control. But if I have N, that won't happen at all. Now this slowdown code I use for the um, other thing is also here. Uh, time greater than zero, meaning any tick longer, than, any tick higher than zero, is going to slow down his velocity. So this keeps him from simply just uh, constantly flying across the screen with his velocity. This will stop his velocity right here. Then sound of that. And now, normally for air attacks, you do not put a change state in, but for um, replicated attacks for air mode, you will need to um, have a change state. 
and the trigger one I, I couldn't figure out what works best so I decided to use um, animation time greater than 18 but uh, you know honestly I think uh, I can use uh, LM time equals zero now at least yeah so change state LM time equals zero it goes back to the flying stance not the regular stance the flying stance and that's that's more or less what all of them are going to have all of them are going to have a change state that sends them back to the flying stance when they finish attacking um, they're going to have a velocity um, mul multiplier that divides them by half right here when time is greater than zero and yet they all have no physics so this way it keeps the player in the air when they attack and it sends them back to the thing so it goes into a loop basically so let me just review here um, you have your state that sends you up into the air you have your state that sends you down to the ground you have your custom landing state which is when you hit the ground now when you go into the air you're gonna change state to another state which is your custom air stance you're gonna have no physics and you're gonna be in um, attack uh, type no you're gonna be an air type sorry so if uh, so if an enemy hits you you're going to be treated as if you're in the air. If you have a type equals S and the enemy hits you, you're going to start walking in the air. If you have type equals C, you're also going to start be start walking in the air, which you don't want. So that's why you need type A for your um, in your state def to prevent your character from walking in the air. Oh, sorry, kind of sleepy. Then now you have the small minor codes, which actually help and matter. You have your chain state for the same command to send you back down to the ground and land. You also gave that a second controller in case you are still alive and you win the round. So the player can come back to the ground and do their win pose, which is a lot safer than doing it in the air. Um, then you have a variable, one variable, 20, set to 10 on, or whatever value you want to use, but you have to set a variable on and you have to set a pause set to limit them and a turn code so that's it's pretty much like limiting the uh, player from what they can do then you have a set of animations based on the, the button that they press um, forward down up blah, blah. forward down left and up forward uh, yeah so based on the direction you press on the keys that depends on what animation you're playing and <clears throat> you need to limit it so you can only play the animation if you're not already playing it so without this code you'll have frozen animations you need this code here so the animation doesn't freeze if they're flying or something and their clothes is floating and this code here the the fifth or first change animation is used to reset the player back to the um, the stance animation next you have movement codes horizontal velo uh, and vertical if you're holding forward you're moving five ve your velocity is five if you're holding back your velocity is negative five if you're holding down your velocity is five if you're holding up your velocity is negative five this is a simple if else code with uh, two parameters and then you have a, um, a velocity multiplier which it activates when you stop pressing any button your character will slow down and just stop there this works as a, a I guess a, mm, a failsafe in case the zero doesn't work or take effect for whatever reason. This is there to take stop him from um, sliding after you let go of him. Then you have the the change state which sends him to the uh, custom land, and then you have a change state to state 500, 5000, which happens if um, he doesn't he's not alive while he's in the air. He's gonna fall down to the ground. So all these things up here are more or less ways to make sure that he flies around safely he can you know he changes the animation he turns around if he touches the ground he'll go back to his crouch he won't fly through the ground because this state change state is going to take effect if he dies he'll fall down to the ground all that stuff so all those all these codes here all these codes make the thing work then you have the replicate air attacks which have the same thing as the regular air attacks except they have no physics they have a velocity multiplier at 0.5 a time greater than zero and they have a change state leading back to the flying stance very important that this is there and that replicate that's, that's repeated in all the um, air attacks that your character has 
And um, that's mainly it. Oh yeah, yeah. And you need the uh, the variable sets code in the negative three state, with move type equals h for the uh, trigger. And uh, that's really mainly it. I've never coded this move before. This is the first time I coded it, and it came out pretty damn well. I used some very uh, minor reference from Cyanide's creations, his Dragon Ball Z ones in particular. His move a lot better than mine do. I mean, look at this. It's God Kung Fu Man. Uh, is he? Oh, there we go. That was strange as hell. Yeah, he's like stuck there. Oh, I remember now. Okay, you see, you know why he's stuck there? Because the basic air attacks have negative um neg negative one time. So to make this actually work, I do need animation time with a value. So 18, 23, 18, 23. Yeah, greater, no, less, greater than, greater than, almost done. Okay, so, no, not a question mark. So, yeah. Change state must have um, a ti animation time. Otherwise, they'll be stuck like they were just now. So now I can do the attacks. And I stay in the air. La, 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 flying around. Light speed, light speed. See? And he went down, landed, did his wind pose. Now let's see if we can have an old Dragon Ball Z fight. Whoops, he landed too early. Up, forward, get him! See? Not bad, huh? Well, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And good night.